campus is empowering. The campus is safe. Her campus is family. Hi guys, I'm Jayla Scruggs and welcome back to Her Campus TV. Come back with us every Tuesday at 1 o'clock where we'll be here. I'm Sam Foreman. I'm the co-host. <laughs> guys, so what's going on in Lawrence this week? Oh man, okay. So if I can remember properly, I know that there's a couple of events coming up for like the next two weeks of the Granada. First off, at this Friday at about 8, we have the Destroyer. Now, I listened to a couple of their songs, and they got some really chill indie stuff. Tickets will probably be anywhere from like $15 to $25. I think that they're definitely worth checking out, especially if you're bored this weekend. Aren't they like a super kind of male punk, mellow punk rock band? Yeah, like it's more like indie rock, mm -hmm. but they're probably one of the more chiller bands I've listened to, which you wouldn't think with the name Destroyer. No, <laughs> you wouldn't think that. you think that they were like headbangers or something like that. I was... 100% expecting them to be like heavy metal. Mm, I have to go check them out. Oh, yeah. oh, and next week is a burlesque show called The Suicide Girls at 8 next Friday. Or is it the 20? I believe it's the 27th. Mm -hmm. So definitely, if you want to, check them out. <laughs> also, I know Food Truck Friday is going on at the Cedar Gallery downtown. You guys should totally check that out. Also, they're playing the, sh the movie, the 1927 movie, Metropolis, at the Lawrence Art Center. You guys should totally check that out. It should be on the 27th. Other things going on in Lawrence you want to talk about? Um, I can't think of anything specific. I mean, like... The Granada always has fantastic shows. In fact, I think there's another band called The Fall of Troy, which I want to go see purely because I'm a double major in classics, mm -hmm. and it's Troy. Um, <laughs> but that's just my inner nerd. Does it have anything to do with like the Greek Roman aspect of Troy? Because I'm addicted mm. to the movie like movie Troy. Sadly, no. No. Uh, they're purely instrumental band. Uh, mm -hmm. Which I saw the Deer Hunter last Friday. They were great. They were just fantastic. And one of their opener bands was called Chon. Um, and they were purely instrumental, and they were really good. Really? Like, honestly, I highly recommend anybody checking them out. Ooh, I might have to go check those out. I love the Granada. They're always having good things over there. Me too. Um, also, another thing that's coming up is National Hispanic Heritage Month, the month of October. So from September 30th through October 2nd, the university will be hosting different things for Hispanic Heritage Month. Righteous. Also, do you watch the Emmys? I didn't get a chance to, but I heard some good things. Tell me, tell me, tell me. <sighs> All right. So one thing that I'm super pumped about, and I'm pretty sure my acting two teacher would be pumped about, is Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. She won uh, Best Leading Actress um, for How to Get Away with Murder. Oh, isn't that produced and written by Shonda Rhimes? I'm obsessed yes. with her. <laughs> I've heard a bit about Shonda Rhimes, but you, I think, know yes, more. Yes, she so. does Scandal. Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, and then some other like dilly dallies that she puts her works in. But I'm addicted to Scandal. Like it's so good in Grey's Anatomy. Like McDermott, McSteamy. I mean, they're all gone, but they're still pretty good people. Like how can you not love them? Dilly dallies. <laughs> Cute word. But like, uh, I'm so pumped for Viola Davis because like, um, she was in a show with Denzel Washington called Fences, mm -hmm. and um, I watched a segment of that, and she gives a really powerful monologue about how she supported the main character, and oh god, it broke, it broke my heart. Have you also seen The Help she's in? No. Like, love The Help, cry in The Help, like, help is like life, and then she, her and Jayla also have a new movie coming out. Ooh, what is it? No idea, it's their names as the title, I'm not 100% sure, but it's, it's part, it's supposed to be pretty good. Like, I saw the clips for it. It looks really good. Honestly, I'm going to have to check that out. You should. Bella Davis is a queen, so. She's amazing. Also, guys, don't forget to come out on Wednesday to our volleyball game. K-State will be playing us here in Lawrence at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. And then soccer on Saturday. We play South Dakota. And then Kim will be back with you guys for news. Thanks. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back. This is Kim. In today's news, National Hazing Prevention takes place this week. This is an opportunity for college campuses, communities, and organizations to educate themselves and those around in preventing hazing. In order to prevent hazing from happening, you must learn what it is, 
report it immediately, and promote it from happening. To find out more on how you can prevent hazing from happening, check out hazingprevention.org. Lady Gaga released a single last week called Till It Happens To You. The video released is specifically about campus sexual harassment and rape. In the video, it is mentioned that one in five college women will be sexually harassed this year unless something changes. Continue to raise awareness and contact police immediately for suspicious behavior. On Friday, the U.S. House passed a bill to temporarily suspend funds to Planned Parenthood of America. The bill was passed 241 to 187. The federal funding is entitled to the investigation of an abortion provider. That will wrap up our next our new segment. Next up, we'll be we'll join Sarah in our interview. Welcome back, this is Campus Celebrity with Sarah Lee, and today our guest is Margarita Nunes, who is a junior and the Vice President of the Hispanic American um, Leadership Organization. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. So just to you know get things rolling, can you describe to us what the organization is and what do you guys do? Um, so HALO is the Hispanic American Leadership Organization on campus, um, and it is supposed to be a place um, to talk about issues regarding minorities, regarding mainly Spanish speaking, all Hispanics. Um, to many students it is a sanctuary because we are in a um, campus that does not share our culture and sometimes it is hard to find people who understand the struggles you are going through. So it is a place to talk about issues that, are revo that revolve in our communities but that are also current um, current issues that are happening on our campus. Right, yeah, definitely. So what do you guys do to like raise awareness about those issues? We have discussions. Um, so last year, there was the whole incident with um, Paco. I don't know if you heard the hashtag, I'm not Paco, which was that in the Leeds Center, um, a frat fraternity did um, a act with the character called Paco, which represented Mexicans in a very derogatory form for us. So we started tweeting about how we didn't feel that this representation was true to ourselves. And it caused a sort of uproar on campus, not really because people don't really know that it happened, mm -hmm. but it was something very touchy and we, we used our voices and we rose and we talked about these issues and we even talked about it in, in the club and how we want to prosper from there and how we want to progress and how um, we want to, in the future, um, resolve these issues and talk about them within the community. Yeah, absolutely. So what has the feedback been like? The feedback has been that it was a very painful moment for a lot of the students, but that they were glad that, you know, when people thought about, like, I'm not Paco, they thought Halo, because Halo did put their fists down and said, this isn't right. And a lot of stuff has happened where we feel like we haven't been as vocal, and so, it felt really good that even though there's still this moment in time that whenever we think about that moment, we know that we did the most that we could to um, say this was not cool and this is not what we are. Yeah, absolutely. And it is um, National Hispanic Heritage Month. So do you guys have any plans for that? Yeah, we actually have Literature Week, we have Halo Week, we have uh, Government Week, um, and I forgot my, our last week, but this week we actually have Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow we have Jeopardy at the OMA. Um, and on Friday we're having a Halo panel night. So you can, it's at the OMA too. And then we're going to have speakers um, speak, um, and students can just go. And our Jeopardy, I think we're doing Jeopardy on governmental mm -hmm. issues. So that should be really fun. Yeah, absolutely. So what kind of issues are you guys discussing right now? Um, well, we just started the year. So we are trying to just uh, get accommodated with our with our Halo members. Mm -hmm. So we haven't got deep into the roots of issues, but 
I mean, we're going to end up talking about Trump and these right. comments that were made around Mexicans because we obviously know it's there. It's like the <laughs> um, um, we're going to talk um, about a lot of things. I mean, I feel like every day something comes up, you know, in the news. It's it's not going to be something headlines, but there's things that, you should, that we will talk about. There's problems in Latin communities that are um, to be talked about. Um, we need, I, I feel that we, um, I want to start um, a program that helps um, flourish Latina women to go to mm -hmm. college. So there's also m many things that, that we can talk about. I mean, there's a lot of issues, but um, I think that we're waiting to get more into the year to get into the deep mm -hmm. roots of it. No, that sounds awesome. That definitely sounds like something that a lot of people would be interested in. What has yeah. been like your favorite event that you guys have done in the past so far? My favorite event? We brought a poet here, um, and she um, also speaks a native language. I, I don't I remember the native language, but I bought her her poems, and there was a a, a poem that was about like women and like um, in Latin poetry. There's, there's a lot of um, color and a lot of we we enunciate the sound a lot. So like la mujer la luna flores, and just the way she said it, it was just so magical to me and the point that she was even able to include her language, would, which would be a language not even spoken in Latin America because it's a native language, was mm -hmm. just so beautiful. And I think that was one of my favorite events that I just saw this woman and I, I, t I asked her things about, well, how do you c combat with writing in English and writing in Spanish? Because my, my parents, like my dad, would not, he will not read anything I write in English. He says, mm -hmm. you write it in Spanish and I'll read. So she just talked, she just told me the advice, like just write and it will come to you. And it is a journey, like you have to be able to get comfortable in writing in Spanish and English. But she's like, but once you get there, it's just magical to be able to transcend into both languages. That's so awesome. Yeah. Just for the viewers out there, how can you get involved with Halo? Um, to get involved with Halo, the OMA, we meet at 7 on Thursdays. Um, I am also a contact, I'm the vice president. Um, you can email me. <laughs> um, my email is m855n270 at ku.edu. Um, or the OMA, just stop in there. Um, and you can ask the front office, Melody, or any other student there. And yeah, we are always welcome to anyone who's um, yeah, we're a great community. Um, we're welcoming. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds, <laughs> it sounds like a great organization. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank, Thank you, you for coming with us to discuss this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, happy Hispanic Heritage mm -hmm. Month. All right. Thank you so much again. Thank you. And now, if you're looking for something cute to wear and you're interested in fashion, we have our fashion segment coming up next. shop local in the heart of the city, you support the people that make our community thrive. The money you spend here stays here, in this place we call our home. Lawrence, Kansas, where there's good old-fashioned hometown pride. Eat local, drink local, shop local. Good afternoon, this is Joanna. We're back with the fashion segment to chat with Cam. Unfortunately, Cam was unable to make it, so we'll, I'll be taking over. Today, we're gonna go ahead and begin. We have Miss Caroline over here. Um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name's Caroline. I'm a sophomore. I'm an English and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies double major. Um, and I'm from Prairie Village, Kansas. Awesome, yeah. okay, let's go ahead and uh, begin. Tell us a little bit about your style. Um, I would consider my style um, kind of punk influenced, I guess. Um, I really like to wear band shirts. Um, I, I love plaid. I like to take cues from like the 80s. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And go ahead and tell us where did you get your outfit that you're wearing today? Um, I actually thrifted both my shirt and my skirt. Um, mm -hmm. My shoes are just Doc Martens I bought online. <laughs> Spent way too much money on those, but <laughs> That's whatever. okay, we all have to splurge once in a while. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so Guilty. what are your favorite stores to shop at or kind of tell us where you got your outfit? Um, I love to shop at ASOS. Okay. Um, I like to thrift a lot of stuff. 
Um, I'm guilty of shopping at Urban Outfitters. Um, yeah, just mainly just online shopping. I think. And what is your go-to outfit? Maybe just for like a class or a night out with like your girls or a date. Um, I would say like for class, I usually just kind of default to like black jeans and a and a t-shirt. Um, for going out, I would usually um, wear like a nicer shirt, maybe a skirt or some like some boots or something. Okay. Yeah. And so. Right now we're in that time of, you know, Kansas wacky weather where we get yeah. some cold in the morning and then some hot in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. what, would, what are some tips for, you know, students who want to look, you know, good, but at the same time want to keep comfy and adjust whether to cold or afternoon all within one day? Um, what I usually do is I, I like to pair like a, like a normal outfit with like shorts or a skirt, but I like to wear like a denim jacket over it. Okay. Because it um, usually just goes with the outfit, but you can easily just take it off and slop it in your backpack okay. later in the day. Yeah, I yeah. definitely, yeah, I will definitely be taking some of those tips yeah. for myself. <laughs> um, and so now that the, you know, cold is coming up, it's, which mm -hmm. is right around the corner, yeah. what are your ultimate favorites for the cold? Um, I love to wear um, tights with tall socks um, and boots with a skirt or a dress. Um, I have lots of sweaters, um, lots of sweatshirts. That they're just easy and they're good for class. Okay, yeah. and let's go ahead and finish it off by you telling us some inspiration. You know, where do you get, is there some YouTubers you watch, a blogger, or, you know, top designers that you look up to? Um, I love Yves Saint Laurent, um, their latest, I think it was their spring um, 15 collection, collection I loved. Yeah. Um, it's very like glam rock inspired and that's a lot of the music that I listen to so I like to take a lot of cues from bands that I like um, and yeah Yves Saint Laurent definitely was inspired by the kind of same kind of stuff that I, I like so it, yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah. All definitely. right well that's a wrap for her campus. Campus is empowering. The campus is pink. Her campus is family.